get it all written out? Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to start with, uh, I do a pretty traditional retro process. Good, could have been better uh, improvements. So I want to start with good. And I will open it up um, for the floor to just tell me what was good about this process. You guys are included, though. Snacks. Snacks, snacks are always good. <laughs> oh, I love snacks. Man, Interactiveness. It was well organized. Uh, I like to hear that one. Okay. I think the team approach helped because there were, you know, you all three were able to collaborate, mm -hmm. yeah, especially when we broke apart in the groups, you were able to split your we, attention. Yeah, the team was our, us, and we weren't all fighting for one person's yeah. attention. Team of presenters. Listen to one person's voice. It's so tiring too. I like how you uh, kind of led us down the path and then showed us the gotchas. Where it's like, oh, okay, here's your here's your statement, but wait, there's more. Okay. Whole house. Yeah, sold out. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to add to this one and say uh, attendee participation. Because mm -hmm. I really liked how the group felt comfortable throwing out ideas and, and questions. That was great. Anything else? Stayed on schedule. Yeah. Had a schedule, but <laughs> yeah, trying to do two ahead. <laughs> so we don't want to shortchange you guys. Oh, you said had a, had a schedule. I thought you said had a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these guys. Anyway, all right. I think another good thing was uh, just the tie-ins to your gotcha. It might tie into the gotchas, but it's your experiences. You know, kind of the things you've done, the way you guys have done things or tried to do things. Or all the scenarios. Yep. There you go. I just wrote goop instead of group. <laughs> let's, let's get over here. Uh, could be better. And you guys are not going to hurt our feelings. We want you to make us better. <laughs> I, told you, I told you my stance on it. <laughs> I, I missed he it. said spelling. The spelling. <laughs> um, while there were um, real life examples, I would like probably more of those. How do you like to see like this is where this is broken down? You get into you know, this is where it is. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. 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 We'll get I'd, back. Yeah. I'd like to see kind of more defining project parameters. You know, I mean this was it was really vague in that, hey, we want a site for user groups. And maybe that was on us, not fully nope. getting in and exploring it. I don't think so. I think that's, we already talked about it. Um, scenario? Yeah, let's see. Scenario definition? Yeah. Project scenario is like one right there. Although we, we solved it. Um, I hate doing I do that. Um, fuzzy. <laughs> fuzzy, yeah. Thank you. Project. Okay. Could be better. To help that out, you could do like a scenario handout with the outline of you know the process of from point A to point B. He's, he's solving. He's solving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To, to his point too, I think that would have made a lot of sense. We jumped into the process and we, we learned the process as we went versus looking at a master view of the process. Mm -hmm. So a master so, view. Um, so what's the problem with that? The problem is 
we didn't know there wasn't a process overview. No, that the groups weren't the, the real process, for example. Yeah. We kind of had an idea. There was the agenda over here, though. I mean, that kind of, are you talking about kind of like a roadmap? Of no, no, no not, not for the class, for the actual agile process. Uh, like that the groups and how user groups played into the big picture. And yeah, that was narrow. Played into. Yep. Is this related to the project or to the, the process that we work through? Because there is an agenda that says that these are what we're going to do, but but is that is that what you're talking about? You'd like to have a better idea of how that agile process, uh, agile requirements process works. I think mean, I had some idea because I did homework before I came into the Okay. Room. But yeah, just just talking through. You know, here's what we're going to do, start to finish, and then let's start jumping into what it is. So I want to say at beginning of class here. Let's start with map. Let's start map. Okay. All right. Did I miss one up here? I thought somebody might have shouted something out while I was. Did you guys presuppose that we would have a overview and understanding of Scrum and Agile practices before the class? Yeah, we talked about that, but. We, in fact, it's why coming out of our, our test run through this, we'd assume that I really understood Agile at the Department of Roads, mm -hmm. which was really a bad assumption. Well, on the one um, hand, I mean, if you think about our customers, they have no idea, and they go through this process. You guys are trying to understand what we're doing to learn how to do it. So there's a little bit like, okay, this is, they just get thrown in and they do this process without needing to understand why it works for them. So I wanted to give you that experience and thought, yeah, okay, I feel it. I see what the benefits are. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing I would say is that normally with, with customers that we know don't have any Agile experience, we go we go to a little bit more lengths to explain the user story format and why we're doing that. Um, we don't really talk about things like pointing. Like we, like those kinds of discussions, mm -hmm. the estimates, we just say, est well, we'll estimate it and we'll get it back to you. We, so we do get into some Agile terminology in this kind of a session, and it does suppose that there is some understanding. But Rusty at the beginning did ask that question, I don't know if you guys remember, how many of you use Agile? How many of you are familiar? You know, and that was trying to alleviate that. Did anyone feel lost by the terminology that we were using? Okay. Okay. Anything else that could be better? I don't know. How do you think that picking the product owner worked? I'm not sure I'd do that again. I don't know. Did John take off? Did John take off? I think he did. <laughs> but I don't know if that was fair to John or not. You know. He handled it okay. He seemed to like, you know, at the end he was like, really in there to do it. Yeah. So Did anybody feel like that left them out of picking the product owner product? That seemed to work okay? Um, I maybe I'm not sold on the added value of mm -hmm. picking a product owner to the rest of the, everyone else. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't feel like it added value to. Yeah. Help Kyle out doing the prioritization. That was kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. Help me out. Yeah. 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 I mean, I will say that I, I had. Um, had help with him, helped me to prioritize stuff. And that's really why we did it, probably more than anything, but. It would have been super awkward if John would have been like, yeah, sure. <laughs> we would have been like, so you? <laughs> I would have been like, uh-uh. <laughs> or if John would have left that way through. <laughs> yeah, he would have been at one table. He would have been sitting right there. We well, we, like, we, we, we've oh. had a talent change. <laughs> yeah. That happens. Okay. Um, let's do these improvements and then I'll get you guys home. Uh, more real life scenarios. So, yeah. how could, I mean, I'm asking these guys kind of, but I think you guys too. How could we, in what format could we present more real life scenarios? Was there, a, was there a point where you were saying, I wish they would have explained this thing better or not? Well, for example, okay, like when we're going through the, uh, you know, the minimum viable product, and we're trying to form that down. Um, like, what's an example of, you know, like, and then a stakeholder comes in or, you know, draws the hard line and introduces all, brand, all this new risk to the project. I mean, what was the result of that? What were the risks that were introduced? Yeah. You know, things of that nature. Um, 
I'd love to see more discussion on a whole. Anytime someone moves a card, that that seems like a point. If we've gone through this whole prioritization process, especially if the product owner and the uh, money man are the ones making that original decision, you got to have a really good reason behind. Yeah, it works a little different in the meeting. We have them just keep going through until they stop moving cards. So in the real regular meetings, we don't have that situation where someone's yeah. moving them as they're drawing their line. They have to keep going through. And then when they're drawing their line, they're not moving cards, but mm, the okay. straight made it a little hard to add. Yeah, and that might be that might be a good point for that is you know maybe highlighting those differences between what we're seeing here and how you handle it in real life. Once the cards were up on the board, it kind of seemed meaningless as to what the cards were because we couldn't read what they said. So if somebody moved one, it was like God. Yeah, I don't know which one got moved. Yeah. yeah. It's also kind of why we intentionally built the cards the way we did, so that the uh, the I ones were kind of the, more the front center. It was easier to digest real fast what something was. But I mean, can you read this? Nope. Yeah. So it's hard. So you have to get up close and personal again with the the way we normally do it with a client. In the sense of this, where we have such a huge group, we've never had such a big group for doing that with you know, said client. But. Uh, so when we do it with big groups like this, we have to do smaller groups, which, but then, again, we have to go quick and we got to do that. So, you know, we don't necessarily encourage that. If you, if you have a big group like this when you're trying to do something like this, something like this for, for, your, for your work, you have uh, a big task. In, in that case, I think we could have done three groups individually throughout the whole process mm -hmm. with each of y'all as the product owners. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Do you think that's part of the yeah, right here? Um, doing the entire process with three separate groups? Is that what the suggestion was? Yeah, because you can still bring it in for the discussion parts. Break out the, Is that number three specific based off the fact that there are three of us? It's two guys and groups. Okay. I'm just making sure. No, I think it's great, but I was just <laughs> just want to make sure I caught that, just in case you know I can't be here. I just got over having bronchitis, so like, let's say I couldn't be here, but we still don't. You wanted the presenter to play the role of product owner, is that what you thought? Uh, I'm not the expert here. I'm just talking. <laughs> I, want to, I want to capture your comment. Hey, look, there's no guarantee I'm going to do what you're asking. <laughs> but I, I want to make sure. Next time. I want, I want to make but sure. But Kyle, we need it all. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Other than in the first project scenario, we talked about a scenario handout. Um, what should that handout have on it? I think having the, the process, just the just a generic like Scrum process on there. So if somebody comes in that they're not familiar with the Scrum process, gives them kind of a just a little snippet of it. Yeah. I, I think any, any knowns that you have about that, you know, coming in, like you, you did a real good job of giving us at the beginning saying, okay, you know, I want to spend $10,000 and I need it by this date. Yeah. But, you know, questions that we couldn't necessarily answer in this scenario, how important was sponsorship? Are we developing a brand new process or is this something that's already existing that we're trying to revamp? So we access. <coughs> No, go ahead. So we said, what is the problem being solved? Yep. The only thing I would question, I'm putting it on paper, people will be less willing to ask questions. That's one of the reasons we kind of just said, well, let's just get there and we'll let them throw it out, you know? Yeah. And I think we got there eventually. I think there was, how many people were frustrated with the objective definition? Anybody? Not necessarily yet. Huh? Just a little bit right off. Yeah. 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 It, it, the same thing happened in our test walkthrough. People got a little testy about it, and some people were like, "Why are we wasting our time?" And others were really like, "No, it's got to be like this." You know, it was kind of a. <laughs> it was interesting. Um, it wasn't quite as as you know broad a. I mean, even now, it still feels it vague to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is going to be vague a little bit. I, okay. Maybe a little background on uh, user groups. You know, uh, there there was a quite a, at least in our group. 
a little bit of discussion of, of what exactly is a user group versus what isn't a user group. You know, do they do they charge fees? Do they not? Do they you know? Are they hosted by companies? Group that mentioned it was it was a club, and that's when it clicked in my head that it's like that's what the user group was, and it's like mm -hmm. you know where. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we intentionally picked the project that we did uh, based on assumptions. So we assumed that maybe more people would be familiar with the user group. Uh, we were talking even across while we were going back and forth and how about, you know, it's really hard to nail down the perfect example project. But maybe, maybe just a club, maybe that is something like that. I like that. Yeah, I think we tried to avoid doing a lot of this background information by picking something we thought everyone would be familiar with. <coughs> and that, it seems to me like that wasn't very successful. And that could just be the fact of just defining it. That, yeah. You know, back to what? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm going to geek out a little bit here. When you go to play Dungeons & Dragons, you don't get there and make the game up. There's a dungeon master who's kind of given you this whole background scenario that you're starting with. And I think that's probably what what we need here. Yeah, it would define a lot of the unknowns that maybe we don't even know to ask. Yeah. Like Kyle gave us that background. Of, uh, this is why we didn't need this. We have spreadsheets and we're doing this. Yeah, which I kind of did this with. Whoop, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that would help. So, okay. Well, don't right. be afraid to go with what you know. Like, I just right off the bat, I was thinking about you mentioning the police accident reporting. Yeah. I was like, wow, that, that actually sounds like a pretty kind of interesting, interesting thing to explore. Yeah, it's an insight into the business that we work in, too, yeah. which may be kind of interesting. Okay, uh, four. What was the value of the group picking a product owner? How should we do that better next time? Any suggestions for anybody? I, I think you nailed it. I think well, splitting uh, up your presenters. I, I think up within the one five thing, that second bullet points, a potential solution. Yeah. Here. Uh, the, the the second bullet point. Right the uh, uh, consider okay. doing uh, three separate groups or Which however many presenters you have, each as a product owner, or e you know maybe having. Yeah. Good. Okay, um, that's kind of skipped over three. No agile process overview at start of class. Um, is a generic scrum agile overview enough? That would be perfect. Okay. Yep. Uh, how should we, should we, should we lead you guys through that sheet then? I mean, would, or would you want us just to hand it out and you guys, you know, here, here it is, read it for five minutes. I, I think that depends on how your room responds to the question. Yeah. I think you guys, you know, the one thing about this session is you did have uh, that site that had a lot of the uh, preparatory information on it as well. Um, now, I don't know how many people actually look at it, but um, that might be good information there. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so you we, don't have to spend time. You, you, could, you called out that there's definitely value in hitting the process cold. I thought that was interesting from the customer perspective. But you know, it might be nice if you, if you refer back to that and said, okay, we're moving from this phase to this phase just to get everyone clear on where we're at. Okay. So, four is up there. Five, cards, reprioritize without explanation. Um, I just kind of heard that one as you guys were talking and I threw it up there. Was that a problem for you? Was it confusing? I don't know. I'm not sure I could come up with a solution off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got five circles up under oh, yeah, one. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's just, just highlighting. Okay, yeah. So it's okay for us to say then, well, look, I know these got reprioritized in that much discussion, but in the real world, we would talk through these reports. Yep, and right. You'd be okay yep. with that. Right. Great. Six uh, presenter assumed group was familiar with user groups, and I think that's probably right here. Yep, yep. yep. Okay. Anything else, guys? I want to add something to the good column, if I can, the supporting materials on the website. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, uh, I think that's the... Here's the one. That was part of the user group one. But Husker is Linux user group. HLUG. Related to that, I'll add, I didn't know the supporting materials were there, so if I registered <laughs> for this, maybe it would have been nice to get an email to say, hey, 
check this out before you go. Oh, yeah. You know, which we may or may not have to control of. You know, we, we, have, we have to ask for it. We can ask, yeah. Yeah. But I like where yeah. you're going with that, for sure. Just make it part of the sign up. So, I'm pretty certain that I remember last year, the year before, I got an email from the workshop I went to saying, yeah. you need to prepare for this. That's right, we were able so. to send out emails or something. Yeah. Not, not this year, but like a, yeah, previous years. This is my first time being a speaker at a workshop or a session, I so I have no idea what the previous years were like. But this year, that wasn't necessarily an option. It wasn't an explicit option, we didn't necessarily ask for it. So that's a good, good thing to draw on. Okay, um, seven. Talk to Adam. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Talk. Thank you. <laughs> you can talk to me all you want, but I'm not going to necessarily solve that problem. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> Anything else, guys? I would say a big really good is the, uh, I was on break and stuff, I was looking at that plural site, and there's a lot of good resources for all kinds of. Yeah, I would also make one last plug, too, as well. Rusty is making a course on plural site for this exact pattern, and except for it probably will, we've done a lot of, hey, we, this is the way we've done it because of a big group. Well, his is being more patterned towards this is what we do for, you know, for real. Uh, so I think real. I encourage you all to check it out. Shameless plug, I guess, for him. But Thanks. Yeah. You got a chance? What card is that? That was a nice touch, too. Good. Well, the, uh, the uh, side cards or the sort yeah. of swag? Yeah, swag. Okay, cool. Well, mm -hmm. swag. Yeah. All right, guys. Anything else? I appreciate you guys staying and helping us make yeah. this, yeah. this process better. You guys put in a ton of effort today. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for the mints. Thank you for the snacks. Yeah.